Welcome to DJ Ango Unchained and we start off in the wild wild west where two fucktards are transporting some black slaves through the Texas desert when night falls and they meet Mr. Dr. King Schultz, a German dentist who's looking for some certain person they are transporting, which is Django and he starts talking to him but the two fuckwads are pissed that he's talking to him like a normal human being. So they tell him that none of the fine African American young gentlemen here are for sale and to piss off. So Schultz kills this dickhead and fucks this guy's horse up and unchains Django. That's it. The end. The movie's over and Django is unchained. Yeah, just kidding, moving on. Schultz throws a bunch of money into fuckhead's face, buying Django, frees these peeps, and rides off with DJ Angle. Next day rolls around, they ride into some fucking town, everybody be looking at them weird. Dr. Schultz asks Django why they looking at them weird, and Django goes, they never seen a nice man with different color penguin and skin on a horse before. They go into a bar, bar guy runs out getting the sheriff because there's a black man in his bar. Meanwhile, Schultz explains to Django over a drink how he's no longer a dentist, but a bounty hunter, and that he wants his help killing three dudes called the Britain Brothers, or Brittle Brothers, I don't know, who the fuck cares all racist bitches anyway. So Schultz wants his help killing these three dudes because he doesn't know what they look like but Django does know what they look like so he tells him if you help me find them I'll give you some money and your freedom because I hate slavery. So Django's like dope I'm in. Then the sheriff comes over and Schultz shoots him dead in the street then goes back in with Django. The town marshal comes along with a shitload of guns and Schultz makes super ultra duper sure that they won't kill him once he gets out like he's being really anal about it which is pretty smart so I can't really fucking nitpick anything here. Fucking Germans being so anal about everything or anything like fun. Turns out the sheriff was the one outlaw posing as another dude with a different name and there was a bounty on his head so he killed him and now marshals him 200 bucks whoa cool stuff cut a little while later Django and Schultz chillin Schultz finds out that Django has a wife but some white twat scarred her and separated them her name is Boomhilda and she speaks a little bit of German and you know Schultz be German so he'd be like what the was in Himmel mein Gott oh no I don't want to Next up they go to a farm place or what is it called plantation yeah one of those where they think the three brittle brothers are and he tells them he's gonna pretend to be his valet and he can't pick out whatever costume he wants to pick out so he's like oh, I can pick out whatever I want. Well, my, my man my man you, you sure about it? So Django picks out a fucking smurf costume but whatever he looking schmexy. They get to this gay ass plantation Schultz pretends to do business with racist KFC guy while Django's off to scope out the place and look for the brittle brothers and he finds one of them and he gets all these flashbacks of how the brittle brothers tortured him and his girl so he tells this finally to go get Dr. Schultz and pushes one of the brittle brothers and shoots him right in the bible page. Then the second bitch fumbles his gun while Django gets a hold of the whip that the other dude was using and serves him a nice can of whoop ass. And honestly who the hell has such bad gun skill under pressure in the wild west you're a criminal for god's sake you're supposed to be good at this shit you know you deserve to die fuck you. Which is exactly what happens because Django takes his gun and says Schultz comes along, kills the third brittle brother. Same shit as the marshal happens with Kentucky Fried Chicken Man and he tells him to fuck off, gives Django the stank guy. It turns out this dude's part of the KKK and he rallies up the fucking KKK dudes to kill Django and Schultz at night. And if you don't know what the KKK is, don't worry, I'm gonna educate you. This stands for cunts, 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 and it's a group of cunts that hate black people. And they try to attack Schultz and Django that night while they're sleeping. But Schultz's tactical German prince, he's just coming a mile away and he's posts up with this sniper rifle and shoots this thing. You know the two that is on top of the dentist cut that he has that he filled with dynamite and it blows up, scares all the people off and probably kills some of them. Then he gives Django a shot to shoot Colonel Sanders while he's running away on his horse. Now complete love is making this shot from that far away. Fine, whatever. The movie says he's a natural. He's a natural. Who the fuck cares? What I want to address here is the fucking blood splatter all over the horse from the entry wound. What, is this some explosive bullet Tarantino? What is up with your bullet physics again, dude? Isn't all the blood supposed to come out from the exit wound or whatever? Ugh, you know, whatever. I don't. I'm, I never shot an old racist guy with an 18th century sniper rifle from a mile away before, so you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. Then night Django and Schultz be chilling again. Schultz tells Django about an old German tale. Well, hey, 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 no, no, no. Not yet, not yet, doctor. Put your hand there. You're like, hey, some years too early for that. But you know. When he tells him to be his bounty hunting partner through the winter and he'll give him a third of all the money he makes and after the winter's over, he's gonna help him find and get back Brumhilde. So Django's like, sick, I'm in. But why are you helping me? As a German, I'm obliged to help you on your quest to rescue your beloved Brumhilde. No, you're not. As a German, you're not obliged to do shit. You're just a nice guy. It's okay to do your own horror sometimes. Come on, you say it. Say, I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy. Cut to a winter montage of lots of bounty hunting, guns, life lessons, and English learning. And after winter's over, they go to Greenville, which is the main slave trade place where they keep track of all the records where slaves come and go and get sold and all that crap, you know, so they can try and boom Hilda. And here's what I don't get. In some bumfuck town in the middle of nowhere, a barkeeper will literally call the sheriff on them. He's so racist. But when they go to Greenville, the epicenter of slave trade, where there should presumably be max levels of racism, 
is in a place where Schultz refused to let Django go alone, they are met with zero conflict. Yeah, okay, that's believable. Anyway, they find out that she has been bought by some dude called Calvin Candy, and she's at Candyland, but they can't steal her because they need a bill of sale, and they just can't waltz in there and ask to buy her because they're just gonna flat out refuse. So they come up with a cunning plan. You see, Calvin Candy is into some nasty business called Mandingo fighting, where black people fight each other to the death for the amusement of white people. Nasty shit. And he has a bunch of Mandingo fighters, so Schultz is gonna pretend to want to buy one of these Mandingo fighters for a pretty penny, while Django pretends to be a Mandingo fighter talent spotter expert, whatever the fuck, I don't know. And he's gonna want to see the good talent, the good fighters or whatever, which is all back at Candyland. So Calvin will take them back there, at which point they will find Broomhilda, and he's gonna be like, oh, I want to buy this girl because she, you know, she speaks German and I like German because I'm German. <laughs> I don't know. So they're gonna end up buying Mandingo Fighter and her, or just end up buying her and not the Mandingo Fighter and like scheme them out of it. I don't know. Fucking. That's the plan, okay? They meet up with Candy. And he's in Greenville doing some Mandingo fighting business. The introductory BS happens. He refuses to sell them anything, but then he hears the price that they're willing to pay, which is 12,000 bajingas for the right specimen. And he does a complete 180 and invites them over to Candyland to see like the good fighters and stuff. On the way, white bitches be assholes to Django, so he does this. Man, Django be strong. Can people actually do that through pure strength? Or is it like some secret kung fu ninja way to make a horse fall down easier? Also, this horse gets up in a split second and it's not freaked out at all. What's up with that? Anyway, after that bit of tension, they keep moving all the other black folk looking at Django mean because he's pretending to be a black slaver. Then Schultz has a word with his man Django telling him to calm the fuck down and not overdo the shit. Right? And he also tells him that he slightly got confirmation that Boob Hilda is at Candyland. I talked about it with Calvin, which is something I never saw him do in the movie, but whatever, I'm gonna take his word for it. They keep moving and they get to this checkpoint place or something like that and they see a Mandingo player that tried to escape uh, torn to bits by dogs and Calvin and Django has changed some bad will passion? It looks freaking there's some stank vibes going on between them, know what I'm saying? Fucking obviously dudes are cut, but they uh, they keep moving and arrive at Candyland where they meet Samuel Jackson playing Steven, Calvin's house fella. Servant? Yeah, sir, sir will do. And he's really irked that Jang was riding a horse and staying in the big house, but Calvin tells him to calm his titties. Did they make Samuel's skin darker in this movie? Give me a second. Oh, she seems like they did. Anyway, Schultz asks for Brumhilla to be sent up with his room, so the fucking assholes bring her out of the torture box and almost set Django off. They dress her up all nice and send her up to his room that night, and she really scared because she thinks she's gonna have some forced sexy time, but little does she know he's a good guy, he don't want none, and this bitch tries to make some small talk, but he's like, eat a dick. He speaks some German to her, like, Fahrrad, Achtung, Schweinsteiger! Fear not, milady. I am here to rescue you with a mutual friend. I'm only speaking in German. So, Candy's peeps don't understand what we're saying. You must promise not to scream when you see this mutual friend of ours, or else we are donezo. Django opens the door behind her. She faints, and the indestructible glass falls out of her hands, but does not shatter. I guess, you know, it's possible that happened, and I fell on a rug, too. So, anywho, after that, they all have some dinner at night, or is it. What's it called when you have food at night? Is it. You got lunch? Sorry. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, supper? What? Who cares? They're eating food at night discussing the sale of the Mandingo fighter without ever seeing the dude that they're gonna buy, which is the whole reason they came here for, but maybe they did it off screen. Whatever, doesn't matter because Hilda is serving drinks on the table and Sammy Boy notices some chemistry betwixt her and Django. He puts two and two together and just as Schultz was offering to buy Hilda, he calls in Candy for a secret meeting and tells him they ain't here for no Mandingos, they're here for the girl. Cause her and Django are in cahoots. See that? I use some old timey wimey wild west convo linguisms. I don't even know what I just said. Candy comes back to the table mad at his testicles because he's been too tired by these people. Keeps his calm for a bit. Then he threatens to bash Hilly's head in and forces them to buy her for 12 grand. Goes to write the bill of sale while Schultz sitting there fuming. Dude's nearly at his boiling point, yo. With all this racist, stupid retardation he can't stand and they also disrespect Beethoven, yo. Ain't nobody disrespect Beethoven when they play with Hato. I'm, the fuck, I'm telling you, shit's getting close. Dude's about to blow. He goes over to the candy, finalizes the papers, and tells him ever so politely to fucking suck a fat cock. But just before he leaves, Candy's like, if you don't shake my hand, the deal's not done. And Schultz really doesn't want to shake his hand, but Candy he threatens to shoot Hilda if he doesn't do it. So Schultz is like, if you insist, walks up to him, boom, hidden pistol, baby, shoots him straight in the flower. He finally snapped and killed Candy and then just stands there doing nothing, allowing this dickhead to shoot him. I understand you snapped and couldn't take him, but you just had to fucking kill him right then and there. But you could have just shook his hand and then fucking did him like you did KFC guy, right? But nevertheless, I understand. However, what I don't understand is why you have to fucking stand still and give him one last zinger, dude. Why not go for cover? Better yet, why not shoot the guy before he shoots you? You definitely had time, and as I recall, that thing has two shots in it. Bruh, come on, you knew so well, you are fucking dipshit. Django gets a gun, kills a bunch of white hoes, and starts to shoot out in which he can clearly shoot through people and wood, but then immediately uses this dude as a meat shield and a cupboard or whatever that is as another bullet shield. And it works. 
What the hell? Fucking bullet physics, Quentin. At least be consistent. Anyway, they threaten to kill his girl again, so he comes out with his hands up. We cut to Django hanging upside down, and somehow his brain has not exploded yet from all that blood rushing into her by staying upside down for extended periods of time. Jackass comes over to cut his manhood off, but Steven stops him in last second, saying that Candy's sister or whatever has decided to give him to a mining company or some shit like that, where he's destined to spend the rest of his life turning big rocks into little rocks. Cause that's worse than having your balls cut off and dying in a few minutes according to them. And they want Django to suffer. So these racist Aussie miners take him, hey there Tan Titty, along with these three dudes that were giving Django mean looks before. Then Django tricksters the Aussies into freeing him by saying he was there for a bounty. He rode in with a white dude that's his partner and shit hit the fan, they killed its partner, and they, uh, you know, accused him of whatever, blah blah blah, now he's here, and they left $11,000 in bounties back at the farm or plantation, and if they let him go, he's gonna help him get it and give him all the money. The Aussie cans are obviously skeptical, so they go over to these three ladies. They ask them and they back up Django's story that he rode in with a white man and that he is a bounty hunter. How they know he's a bounty hunter, I have no fucking clue, but they do. They let him loose, give him a gun, he proceeds to shoot them and blow Quentin by Taren Titty. He takes some TNT, a gun, and rides off with the black dudes finally smiling at him because they finally realize that he a badass plain white folk and fucking shit up. He gets to the checkpoint where the dogs tear up the one dude and brings the house down on these motherfuckers. I hope he got a salad from that checkpoint. His family jewels must be fucking crushed. I mean, I've never ridden a horse without a saddle before, but I imagine your nutsack would have its contents turn into mashed potatoes. Like the horse's spine, your nutsack just smashing into each other, just clashing, you know. Someone, yeah, I don't know. He doesn't get a saddle, by the way. <laughs> but he goes over to Dead Schultz, takes the bill of sale, and pays some respect. Ripping pepperoni, my man. Gets his wife, waits for the candy fam to come back from the funeral, kills these sweet tarts, and shoots this jackass in the nuts, then shoots Calvin's sister. Why the hell does she fly off in a direction completely different from the one Django shot her from? Actually, why does she even fly off in the first place? None of the other dudes did. Fuck it, whatever. He tells these ladies to leave, but see to stay because he's just as bad as the white bitches. Stephen finally drops the old man act. Is it Stephen or Stephen? Ah, uh, too late now. Django kneecaps him, lights a fuse, walks out the house, and this time cool guys do look at explosions that they're standing dangerously close to Django, then gets on his horse that was not tied to anything and did not run away from the huge scary explosion, although Boomhilda's horse very clearly got scared and she had to calm it down. Freaking who cares? Gets on the horse, does a little dance, and rides off with his wife. This movie gets a TNT out of a DD.